Warren Buffett uh, sold airlines a little while ago. He's been right his whole life, but sometimes even somebody like Warren Buffett, I have a lot of respect for him, they make mistakes. They should have kept the airline stocks because the airline stocks are, went through the roof today. And, and others did too. The whole market went through the roof. Today is the Warren Buffett era coming to an end with Berkshire Hathaway, BRKB shares, because I ain't a share rich enough yet, baby, has been severely underperforming the overall market. So we're going to deep dive down and look at what, you know, Buffett's future is going to be looking like here, guys. And there's nothing funnier than looking at these Trump interviews and Buffett interviews in retrospect, of course. I think Trump is on a whole nother disconnected level from the way, let's say, you know, Buffett thinks about long-term investing. And if the fundamentals of the business change, well, you have to change your opinion on it no matter what the stock price is because of course he took a huge loss on those airlines but let's step back to when trump became president and what buffett thought i will judge president trump after four years based number one on how safe the country has been kept i mean that is the number one job of the of the chief executive of the United States. There is nothing funnier than putting your retrospect glasses on and stepping back into that hindsight of 2020 just to see how things played out. But ladies, gentlemen, I look so forward to breaking this down for you. So let's just ha ha, right in this. Drop it. <laughs> opinion on why I believe the Warren Buffett Berkshire Hathaway era is slowly coming to an end. And before we deep dive into my own personal opinions, let's step back a little bit in time to those first quarter earnings that were released May 2nd. And the CV, the stock market crash, weighed heavily on Berkshire with a net earnings were recorded at minus $49.8 billion, reflecting a $55 billion loss for Berkshire's massive stock portfolio in the first quarter. This is due to a change in accounting rules introduced in 2018. That means unrealized capital gains and losses need to be counted as earnings. This means if your portfolio of stocks loses value, you still have to count that as a loss, even if you don't sell them at that price, which I actually really like this rule because as a deep discounted value investor, you could go find stocks that are out of favor to most investors, degrading the stock price, bringing down those net earnings, but maybe you know their cash flow coming from their operations might still be going up. If you understand what I'm talking about, simply hit that like button. But nonetheless, if we go into Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio or their balance sheet to prove this, we can re see the represented loss of $49 billion. But if we scroll down to that net cash flow from operating activities, unfortunately, they are losing almost a billion dollars in cash flow from all of their operating businesses, which is almost terrifying considering if you compare it to something like a Pepsi, a Johnson & Johnson, a lot of these other companies are actually having increased revenues, uh, which is what I want, which are the kind of companies I would rather own. So it's going to be really interesting to see these second quarter earnings to see if they can get those cash flows back up. But nonetheless, Berkshire Hathaway, guys, is down 20% year to date compared to the S&P 500, only down 5.6%. I do not want to understate the severity of the stock performance in the near term because obviously we have to look out into the long term. But nonetheless, if you go back through Berkshire's history, they have rarely, I think only once or twice in their entire history, have underperformed the market, not only to the downside, but to the upside. So this is some pretty hesitant stuff. And the reason I think they're underperforming is primarily due to an over diversification, guys. I sat down with a forensic psychologist yesterday. And by the way, we're going to be doing a live interview tonight at 8 p.m. with this gentleman. And if you want to join us at the Passive Income Educator channel, I'd appreciate it. you can chat with us live. And this gentleman that mentioned that after you hold about 20 to 30 stocks, the performance of your portfolio starts to get hindered by the over diversification of it, because at some point it just stops making sense. And you might as well be buying ETFs. And Berkshire Hathaway at this point is pretty much an ETF, guys. They hold so many different companies and they are heavily exposed to insurance, which is another reason I think is one of their biggest downfalls, because a lot of people think Berkshire is just loaded with cash and they're not spending it, but they need some backup protection in case they run into insurance issues. And we all know insurance companies make a lot of money, but if things get bad and hurricanes come, it's not good for the insurance companies. And I've got an incredible interview here. I just wanted to take a quick listen to because Buffett touches base on why he would be advising people to invest into the stock market, but he himself isn't really throwing capital around right now. So just take a quick listen. The next question comes from Robert Tomas from Toronto, Canada, and he says, Warren, why are you recommending listeners to buy now, yet you're not comfortable buying now as evidenced by your huge cash position? Well, A, as I've explained, the position isn't that huge when I look at 
worst case possibilities. I would say that that there are things that I think are quite impossible, improbable, and I hope they don't happen, but that doesn't mean they won't happen. I mean, for example, in our insurance business, we could have the world's or the country's uh, number one hurricane that it's ever had, but that doesn't preclude the fact we could have the biggest earthquake a month later. So we, we, we are not, we don't prepare ourselves for a single problem. We prepare ourselves for problems that, that sometimes create their own momentum. I mean, 2008 and nine, you didn't see all the problems the first day. There are, there are things that trip other things, and, and we take a very much a worst case uh, scenario into mind that probably is a considerably worse case than, than most people do. So uh, I don't look at it as, as huge, and I'm not, I'm not recommending that people buy stocks today or tomorrow or next week or next month. I think it all depends on your circumstances, but you shouldn't buy stocks unless you expect, in my view, you, you expect to hold them for a very extended period and you are prepared financially and psychologically to hold them the same way you would hold a farm and never look at a quote and never uh, never pay it. You don't need to pay attention to them. I mean, the main thing to do, uh, and you're not going to pick the bottom and you're not going to, nobody else can pick it for you or anything of the sort. You've got to be prepared to, when you buy a stock to have it go down 50% or more and be comfortable with it. I, I pointed out that there have been three times in Berkshire's history when the price of Berkshire stock went down 50%, three different times. Now, if you owed it on borrowed money, mm -hmm. you, you, know, you could have been cleaned out. Uh, there wasn't anything wrong with Berkshire uh, when those three times occurred, but if you're going to, if you're going to look at the price of the stock uh, and think that you have to act because it's doing this or that, or somebody else tells you, well, I mean, you know, how can you stay with that when something else is going up or anything? Uh, you really, you've got to be in the right psychological position. And frankly, some people are not really careful. Some people are more subject to fear than, than others. It's, it, 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 it's, like, it's like the virus. It strikes uh, some people with uh, much greater ferocity than, than, than others. And, and Fear is uh, fear is something I've really never felt financially, but but uh, I don't think Charlie's felt it either. But, uh, some people can handle it psychologically. If you can't handle it psychologically, then you really shouldn't own stocks because you're going to buy and sell them at the wrong time. And you should not count on somebody else telling you this. You should, you should do something you understand yourself. If you don't understand it yourself, you're going to be affected by the next person you talk to. And uh, uh, so you should you should be in a position to hold, and I don't know whether today is a, a great day to buy stocks. I know it will work out over 20 or 30 years. I don't know whether it'll work out over two years at all. I have no idea whether you'll be ahead or behind on a stock you buy on Monday morning. I love Buffett's interviews because his moral fundamentals never change over time, which is something Trump just keeps forgetting. Buffett doesn't care what the stock price is doing day to day. He only cares about the fundamentals of a company and the long-term projected aspects of them. But in the same notion, he's he's got so much capital and so much money out in the markets. It is so hard to keep track of all those businesses, whereas an individual person like myself, in my own circumstances, with no debt, no obligations, I think this is probably one of the best buying opportunities any investor could have got into talking about you know, a month or two ago, not right now when the market's just, you know, buy that morning dip for the afternoon rip into all time high seems to be like every other day right now. But in the same notion, guys, you can't compare yourself to Buffett. You can take his fundamentals and his morals and apply them to your investing philosophies. But at the end of the day, you're not in the same situation he is. And I truly believe at this point going forward, I don't think Berkshire Hathaway is going to have nearly the performance that something like my individual portfolio can have just holding really core solid companies like Facebook, Apple, Microsoft for growth, and then focusing on really good dividend stocks like Northland Power, Utilities, Johnson & Johnson. And I, I'm almost willing to make a bet over the next five years that my portfolio is going to outperform Buffett's. So at this point in time, guys, you know, take everything that these people do in strides because they are playing at a level you will never understand, more than likely throughout your life, because we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars. And that is their biggest benefit, but also their biggest hindrance.
hindrance. And I would love to know what you think in that comment section below, ladies and gentlemen. I love Buffett. He, he is a guy that has trained me and I've listened to every interview that will ever come up. And I pray that hopefully coming into the, the next year, a Berkshire annual meeting, that I might have the guts to finally get on a plane and go and visit uh, good old Charlie Munger and, and Warren Buffett on their annual meetings because that would be that would be something that you could just tell your kids about and it's not something that's going to be happening uh, much longer into the future at their age um, so definitely admire and take in the advice they have if you're new to investing because I promise you it's not going to do you any bad but stay cool stay awesome and if you guys will join us at the passive income educator this evening we'll can continue the conversation there